Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's project, I am going to be modifying my portable air conditioner. It is a Black & Decker b Pack 14, so 14,000 BTUs, and it's in a, it says WT, so that means it's the white color. This particular model does not have the heat pump inside it. It's just for cooling and dehumidifying only, but it has a very bad flaw, design flaw, that a lot of portable air conditioners have, and I'll show it to you on the back. For reference, here is the model and serial information. This was manufactured in January of 2020, and I purchased it right before the summer of 2020, and here we are in August of 2022. There have been some refinements to this model, and I think the only one that I can find on, from the one on Amazon where I got it was that they add a drain port here. This vent is the intake for the room air cooling and then the cold air comes out then we have where the main design flaw is is that we have one exhaust vent here and then we have the intake for the condenser coils which are located right here now without going into the technical operation of how an air conditioning works essentially air conditioning is move heat from one place to another what we have here is the condenser coils the condenser coils get hot and what it's doing, it's drawing in the air here to cool off the pump and also the condenser coils, and it's blowing the hot air outside of your room. Then you have the evaporator coils, which get cold, and it draws the air in from the room and spits it out even colder out the front. The biggest problem that these portable air conditioners have, especially if they only have one vent like this, is because this intake here for the condenser coils, it's stealing cold air that it's already working hard up here to cool off your room in order to cool off the condenser. If you have a dual vent, what'll happen is that you're taking outside air to cool off the condenser coils and it's blowing that hot air out and you're recirculating the air here in your room to cool off the temperature. So as you can imagine, the efficiency of this unit is not very good when you have a single vent like this. This is a very popular unit on Amazon. I think over like 30,000 reviews on it, and it works well. There's really nothing wrong with it, but I want to make it better, and for a few bucks, we're going to do that. We're going to add a vent adapter to this intake here and use the window adapter parts that I have with a couple additional ones and convert this to a dual vent unit. That will significantly increase the efficiency and cool off your room faster without creating a negative pressure vacuum in your room. All right, the curiosity got the best of me. I decided to take this apart to really see how this is configured. And it's a little bit of work to get to this. I wouldn't recommend it. But the good thing I can tell you is that the evaporator coil right here is sealed off from the condenser with the exception that the drain for the condensate is not up here. They moved it down here, so there is a drain that's going right on top of the condenser, which is essentially evaporating all the moisture out and blowing it out the exhaust vent, which that was done by design. So this is good news. With it being isolated, with the exception of the drain, I'm not going to worry too much about that because that's very little efficiency lost in terms of air escaping from the condenser side going up into the evaporator side and vice versa. The good thing is, is that it's sealed off here, sealed off all around here, and we're good to go. The only thing I'm going to do is to try and clean up these fins a little bit. There's a little bit of dust, and we'll put it back together and continue on with this modification. All right, guys, we got the fins all cleaned up. Best way to do that, I would recommend using a painter's brush or a small brush like this one. You don't want to hurt the fins by going this way. The fins go up and down this way. I don't know how well you can see it, but that's how you clean it up. And that should do it for the cleanup here. Now let's get to working on this piece here. Here's a quick update. So I got a couple parts. I got a kit that included this hose, this coupler adapter. This is gonna be an intake. And I got this, it came with a couple panels, this panel and a few of these, if you wanted to hook it up to a larger window. My windows are, to, I think, 31 or 32 inches wide, which is standard. What I did was on here, I took some closed cell foam panels here that I had left over from the basement project, 
and I just framed it out so that the there's a, a smaller vent on the back here and then the larger vent for the intake is on the side. I basically just framed it out and then covered it up and sealed it off with aluminum tape. So this is actually quite sturdy. And I use this six inch flange adapter, which I will put in the description, both this and also the kit for that I got for the window adapter. And retrospect, I should have gotten a kit that had two openings because unfortunately these panels don't have, it only has the opening for the hose that it came with. This is the original for the air conditioning unit with that. And I'm going to now have to take this adapter hole and cut it into one of these panels, which I started to do. I'm going to have to get my jigsaw and cut that out. But that is going to be the best way to have one window adapter panel for both hoses. Finally, one other thing that you'll find in the next segment once I get the part is that this flange, the outer diameter is too large for the inner diameter of this hose and the original hose that it came with. But I found that if you have another adapter, uh, a coupler adapter that you can connect these 5.9 inch hoses with, you can actually slide that one over and then I'll aluminum tape that. And so then anytime I want to connect the hose and I can just screw this onto the adapter. For the meantime, uh, I did this little cardboard trick and it works, but then it's a lot harder to remove the hose because then I'd have to untape it. I waste tape. I wanted to make that a little bit better. So I'm going to put the adapter on there and make it a little bit easier to take the hose on and off. Here is a preliminary test. It just kicked off. I've only been running it for about 10 minutes. I haven't gotten the coupler yet, but I'll show you that in the next segment. We have air coming in to cool off the condenser and then hot air going back out. I did cut into one of these panels, which wasn't that hard at all. And I do have to add a thicker sealing tape here because I can see some of the gaps here. But the good thing is that only 10 minutes running and it was about 78 to begin with. And it's already down to 75 degrees and 55% humidity, which I had it set to 75. So that tells me that the thermostat is working properly. It's noticeably quieter with this in place. I don't know how well you're going to be able to tell on camera, but to my ears, this machine sounds a lot more quieter than it did before. Likely because this is all blocked off because the compressor is right onto the side of the machine. I just set this to dehumidifier so you can hear the compressor running. And overall, I think the sound is far better, meaning it's quieter with me blocking off the compressor area with the intake hose here. To me, it overall sounds quieter, which is a good thing. And I'm very happy with this setup. Now, I will have to do a quick couple refinements here in the next segment. I will mention that the hose here on the exhaust does get hot. And being that it's a plastic hose, it will radiate that heat back into your room. If you really wanted to go crazy and wrap this hose in some sort of insulation like a heavy blanket so that it doesn't radiate heat back into your room, you could do that. I'm not going to go that crazy, but you could if you want. It's just another way to make this unit a little bit more efficient than what it was from the factory. Here's the adapter that I picked up. This is an extension adapter that you would normally find to connect 5.9 inch AC hoses together to extend them out to make them longer. In my case, I am actually going to only use one half of it because you can see the fins here for engaging the threads of the accordion part of the hose here. I use the pliers to basically nip away one side of it because the cool thing about the inner diameter of this is that it is a perfect fit to go over this flange. Now, I looked online and I could not find a flange to threaded adapter like this, but now I'm just going to put some aluminum tape around here and then I can actually screw the hose for the intake right on there and disconnect it very easily just like I can for the exhaust here. And here's the final setup here. We have the coupler adapter. I just aluminum taped around the flange adapter and now I can attach and detach the intake hose very easily and I could do the same thing with the exhaust hose like I always have and that's it. It looks a little homebrewed and it is, but 
for a few bucks, I was able to convert this unit that was a single vent into a dual vent pretty easily. So my final thoughts on this little project here is that Black & Decker really screwed themselves. The, I know some of the GE portable air conditioners allow you to, it comes as a single vent, but then they give you a kit that you can buy separately to convert it over to a dual vent and you can get more efficiency out of their units. That's not really the best marketing tactic, but it is better than having to do something like this. And it has something like this that you can go and install by removing the side vents and then replacing it with an actual adapter without having this big thing on the side of it that's taped on it. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. The parts are very inexpensive for this project. They're in the description below. Again, there's probably many different ways that you can go about doing this. Unfortunately, this particular model does not have a pre-made kit conversion kit to make it a dual vent, so I had to improvise. But I see a lot of YouTube videos that have done this in the past, but this is hopefully one of the shorter videos so you can see exactly a straightforward process on how it was put together. If there's any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Till next time, guys, thanks so much for watching.